There's something very interesting going on with the Nielsen ratings regarding streaming. Ahsoka is not doing well. Of course, Ahsoka is off the air, but we're still getting in the data from Nielsen. But there's something that we may not have suspected happening. And that is that Disney is owning the top two movie slots when it comes to streaming films. What are those movies? Well, they're both box office flops. The Little Mermaid live action reboot, as well as Elemental. And Elemental is at the top easily. So what is going on here? Why are families tuning in to movies that they did not go see on the silver screen? And does that mean that, in fact, in reality, Disney Plus may actually be adding to the failures? Adding to the losses of the company? We'll explain it all right now. Hello folks, it's a beautiful day out there because you are here with us and we sure do appreciate being a part of your time. Time is the most valuable resource we have and we intend to use it wisely with you today as we continue to explain entertainment and indeed keep you ahead of the culture curve. Today we are doing a balancing act of trying to figure out if a movie is made for the box office and it depends on making that money to make it make sense, if it does well on streaming instead but not at the box office, does that mean that it's a failure or a success? That's the question Disney has to be asking themselves today as they have two box office flops that lost literally hundreds of millions of dollars sitting at the top of the streaming ratings when it comes to movies. But is that good or bad? Well, we're going to debate it. We're going to find out what we think about it and analyze it with some folks who really know the answer. We have just received the latest Nielsen numbers. So, folks, let's go ahead and uh, hop on over there and see what's going on. And there's going to be some interesting stuff to see here. For the week of September 18th through the 24th, we now have the data. And here's what we have. You're going to notice, of course, what we all suspected would be that, uh, indeed, there is no Ahsoka. Ahsoka is not in the top 10 for... Uh, streaming, and so that is just more proof positive that this does not have the gas to make it into a movie. It just flat out doesn't. Um, this this film or this streaming service, it just doesn't have the interest levels that could justify the kind of budget you're going to have to give it for some sort of Thrawn movie, some sort of Mandoverse movie, and it may actually be a signal that Star Wars is so damaged that it it really can't get into the top ten anymore. There could be a fantastic show that pulls it off. This isn't it. There's some other interesting stuff, though, out of Nielsen as well. Suits continues to dominate. Elemental has a fairly decent hold. But there's something here that I'd like to bring attention to about Elemental. And that is that Elemental had a price tag for Disney of about $250 million. And we also know that it uh, failed at the box office in terms of it did not make its money back. And so its losses may be something like $70 to $80 million in losses for the Walt Disney Company. It looked like it was going to be much worse. It had a pretty good hold. And so that saved it from being another catastrophe like Indiana Jones, but it's still not successful. Now, consider all of that and then look at the number four spot is Bluey. And consider what the budget must be for Bluey, which would be minuscule in comparison. And there's Bluey pulling 856 million minutes and being number four on the, on the chart. Bluey continues to do this over and over and over. It is a fabulous return on investment, whereas I would suggest that Elemental I don't, you know, it's doing well. Hopefully it continues to do well. But the price tag that comes with it may mean that second place, even, even second place, is a, a big ask to suggest that it's a success. But if we look at the rest of this, uh, there's not much to see in the bottom half. Coco Melon has slipped. I think that's big for uh, the, the preschooler crowd out there because it's suggesting that Bluey is becoming the dominant franchise in that demographic area. Out of mm -hmm. originals, Ahsoka is in third place. But Jonas, what do you notice about those watch minutes? Uh, it looks like the watch minutes actually went down. So they 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 went up in the ranking, but down in the actual minutes watched. That's that's fascinating. With more episodes, so, of course. So in other words, there's less competition this week for Ahsoka. Not as much new stuff came out. And so it's gone up in terms of it, the placement for originals. But in terms of viewership, it went down. Now, you can bet that Disney, and we don't fault them for this, but you can bet that Disney and probably the access media, they're going to run with Ahsoka getting third place on originals. When the reality is less people tuned in, it appears. Fair? Yeah. And it was, it was 577 last last week. So that's, and that's very did strange. less people did less people tune in 
because they aren't there anymore? Because they were hoping Ahsoka would keep them as Disney plusers, and when they got fed up with it somewhere during the run, they walked away not only from the show, but from membership. That's a good point. Yes, exactly. And, how, you know, there's also this uh, opportunity cost that's involved here. How many people, if Star Wars was doing well, would be signed to, Dis to Disney Plus who are not? And as you think about that, consider too, we'll be talking about this coming up real soon, Netflix. Netflix doing so well, picking up 9 million subscribers at the same time that Disney has lost subscribers in three quarters consecutively. Uh, if we go to Acquire, there's not much to see here either. Everything looks pretty normal. On movies, I do want to point this out. Here's what I think is happening. And this is why I'm poo-pooing the success of Elemental. And that may seem unfair. And maybe it is. I'll take some criticism here if it's appropriate. But what I think is happening is that for Disney+, Plus, you can see the top two spots are Elemental and The Little Mermaid. Before Elemental came out, The Little Mermaid was sitting with essentially 1.6 billion minutes. Now Elemental has 1.3. The Little Mermaid now has about 400 million minutes watched. What I'm thinking is happening here is I think that Disney Plus as a babysitting tool has a baked in amount of time that kids are sitting down and watching a cartoon movie. And I'm thinking that Elemental and Little Mermaid are just eating up that time that sits there no matter what. And the reason I say that is because of the giant drop off of The Little Mermaid. So when Elemental comes in, it eats up the Little Mermaid's numbers, and the Little Mermaid drops to take whatever was left of the Little Mermaid's original numbers. It, it and that seems to me to be an indication it's just they're, they're just cannibalizing their own babysitting hours. It tells you something else. It tells you that the usual, in the good old days, if not that long ago, of people re-watching these Disney movies over and over is going away. It tells yes. you that people who've seen Little Maid, Mermaid once, who might have been neutral about it and not political about it, the kids, when you put it on the second time, are saying, no, 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 no. Give me something else. And that's a huge change for Disney. It that's absolutely is. Absolutely really is. Point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think Elemental, uh, what I would very much look forward to seeing is how Elemental does over the next month. I'm not saying that. I, I'm surprised that it's sticking around as much as it has. And and I, I mean, c more power to them that they actually have something that seems to be, at least in the short term, resonating with kids. I'm not trying to say doom and gloom over here, but uh, I, I'd very much like to see what's happening here. Now, Moana, who is so far down that list, that's the one that they're investing all of their parks infrastructure into. And in Kanto, which is uh, not on this list at all, that's the one that they're talking about all their blue sky ideas. Oh, maybe in within the next 10 years, we might consider maybe thinking we might do a land. Uh, yeah. They aren't really putting all of their uh, horsepower behind Elemental right now. So maybe they also know that uh, something's not going on there. As the uh, alleged historian here, I want to point something out. Once upon a time, the production of many motion pictures was considered, yeah, we'll make money on that, but it's a loss leader for the home video sales. Uh, is is this, that what happened to Elemental? Uh, you know, in fact, there's a funny little quirk. Um, once upon a time, the dimensions of the one sheet for a feature motion picture that went into the theater marquee were different than they are now. And the reason they changed was that the studios realized that when they had to transform it into a VHS box cover, the dimensions were taller and narrower. Oh. And they said, why should we pay an artist to redo it when we could do it that way from the get-go and literally change the poster size, anticipating the VHS box? So <laughs> if you consider that Elemental in the theaters, yes, didn't do so great, but was a lost leader to its appearance on streaming, um, is it worth it in the long run in the sense that does it keep subscribers who keep the revenue flowing? I don't right. know. And, and that's the difficult thing to ascertain is we don't understand the correlation between the time watched for these, these children's movies and any kind of gain in subscribers. And if you're losing subscribers, but kids are sitting there watching a movie that their parents wouldn't take them to see in the theaters and they're watching it on repeat, I don't, I don't know that that's a success. I don't know how you would call that a success unless and yet there it is and they deserve praise for having the top two spots right unless they're at, unless they're monetizing it unless they're putting ads on it which disney so far has said they're not putting ads or many ads on kids content all, all of which in a different way 
shows you the the fatuosity of SAG-AFTRA mm. for saying we want so much per head for subscribers, whether they're making you any money or not. And ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed this conversation today. We hope that you enjoyed it so much that you'll join the conversation. Consider dropping a comment down below. We cover your comments. We care about what you think. And if you wouldn't mind, like, share, and subscribe. And yes, indeed, when you click it, you stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. Folks, we are continuing to cover Disney. We'll keep at it. We'll keep going. And we'll keep doing it with the kind of fair analysis that you've come to expect from the WDW Pro channel. We are neither shills nor haters. And we will see you later. Folks, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun.